In today's video, we are going to take a look at how to implement lights as well as have shadows work in our environment. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashtips and welcome back to my channel. So far, we've learned a lot on how React 3 Fiber works. And if you want to learn along and follow along with us, I highly recommend watching this playlist, this series from the start. As we can see, our scene already has lights. But what we're going to do now is turn off all the lights and look at the available options that we have. We are also going to move these spheres to the top, get rid of these two, focus on one and put in a ground. In the code, what we are going to do is we will be removing these two lights. And then for the three spheres, we're going to get rid of the first one as well as the last one. We also don't need this displacement map. Then we're going to move the position Y up by one. This will give us this result. If we refresh, we should see one sphere and there's no lights in our scene. Then to include a ground, what we will do is have this. We will place in a mesh over here and in the middle, we'll make use of the plane buffer geometry and give it a 5x5 five five size. We will also include a material, making it green. And for the rotation X, we will rotate this to be on the right side. So our ground is horizontal. So this will be our starting setup. We have the sphere floating in midair as well as a ground that is technically green, but we cannot see anything yet because there are no lights in the scene. If we take a look at 3JS's documentation on lights, we will see that there's many options available for us to use. In this video, we will cover the most common ones and what makes sense for our metaverse. But feel free to explore all the options available and maybe something fits your use case better. Let's take a look at the first one, which is the ambient light. Think of an ambient light as the light that fills up the room. If you sit in a room with curtains closed, but the sun is still coming through, the whole room is still illuminated. This light can also not be used to cast any shadows because we do not know the direction that the light source is coming from. Let's implement the ambient light. Start off by typing out ambient light in camel case, save it, and then go back to the scene. Notice now how the scene has light, but the light is coming from every angle. There's no shadows or dark areas in the scene because this light comes from everywhere. Now this might be great if your game doesn't require any shadows and you just want everything to be well lit, you can use an ambient light. But what we are looking for is a more realistic feel to lighting, meaning that the objects are not going to be this bright. So let's turn down the intensity of our ambient light. And here we can go and type in intensity and give it a 0.3 value. Now we can see the objects are not that illuminated and this is perfect. You might ask and say, well, this doesn't look that good, but the purpose of an ambient light is to act as the full light. In the darkest areas of our shadows, I would still like to see some texture and indeed we can. So let's now go and add a different light that's going to act as our sunlight. A light that is great to use for a sun is a directional light. And that is because a directional light shines in a particular direction all the way through your scene. And we can also apply shadows to this light. To add the directional light, you can just type out directional light again in camel case. And this time I'm also going to provide it a position. 0 for the X, maybe 10 for the Y and 10 for the Z. This will just offset it to be a bit higher and shine from an angle. Looking at our scene, we can see that the ground floor is now illuminated again. And so is the sphere, but only from an angle. You can see that there's still dark areas and then well lit areas where the sun is shining on the sphere. The only problem is that we can't really see where our directional light is situated. In order to see the directional light, we can add a helper. But as you know, we can't add it directly in here. We need to create a component of the light. In fact, I'm going to create a component that's going to house both of our lights. 
So in the components folder, create a new file and call this lights.ts. Then let's go ahead and create our lights component, which will be of type react.functional component. So let's type this out. We are going to return something, we just don't know what yet. So let's put that there. And then let's export our lights. In the main index.ts file, go and cut out our lights. Then let's go and return them in here. Now in React, you cannot return two components in the return statement. It needs to be only one component. So let's wrap this in these empty brackets. And currently there might look like there's a lot of errors and that's because our file is TS. It needs to be TSX. And that's because we need to return JSX code technically. And now that we have our component, we can go to the index file and here at the top, let's go ahead and import our lights. Now you need to make sure that you are importing it from your components. And then here, just below the spheres, we will add our lights. Now everything should be exactly the same in, uh, in your scene. The thing is we still want to find a way to see the light and now we can do that in the code in our lights component. How we do this is by getting a reference to our light first. Let's create a variable and call this the light ref. Here we will also specify what it will be. This will be equal to the use reference from React. Now to be even fancy, we can say that this will be type of a three dot directional light. All right. So this will grab the reference from this directional light over here and we will have access to it. Now we can use the use helper from Dre. Type out use helper. And if you've installed Dre before, it should pick it up. Otherwise, just remember to import this. And the helper takes in a few things. First, we're going to give it our reference. Then we specify what type of helper we want. We would like the directional light helper. We're going to pass in some parameters and also make the color red. Now that we have this, go back to the scene and we should see the directional light over here. We could probably make it a bit smaller, but this indeed gives us a sense of where our directional light is positioned. And now we can see that the light is coming from the right hand side down towards this target. By the way, the target is also a property you can set on a light to make it shine in a different direction. But for us, this is perfect shining from the top down. Now that we have this in place, let's add some shadows. To make shadows work, you need to do a few things. Firstly, on the directional light, let's turn on cast shadow, meaning that this light will have the ability to cast a shadow. In the index file, on the canvas itself, we need to enable shadows as well. And then for the mesh plane, our ground, we need to add receive shadows. And for the spheres, so remember for our sphere, we need to set this to cast a shadow. Now that we have this, we know which items are going to cast shadows and which ones will receive shadows. If we go back to our scene, we should see our sphere casting a shadow on the ground. The lighting setup also looks quite decent. I think we can increase the ambient light so we can see more data here in the dark areas. But for a sun shining down on an object, this looks quite good. At the end of the day, when it comes to shadows, you can see it looks a bit pixelated and we can increase the map of the shadows to make it better looking. But I want to show you something when we move the object around. For this example, I will increase the plane size to maybe be a thousand by a thousand. It's going to be a huge plane for the ground. And then for the sphere mesh, I would like to move it around. So with Dre, I'm going to import a interesting package called transform controls. Here, I'm going to wrap the mesh with the transform controls. And let's just cut this out and put it over here. Now, if we go back to our scene, we can see that we've got some transforms to move 
this mesh around. However, if I move it, the orbit controls moves along with me. So I'm just going to briefly, in the main scene, go and switch off orbit controls. Then go back, and now I'm going to move my mesh. What you notice is that the shadow disappears and it's almost like it has a bounding box to the point where it disappears at certain areas. This is because the directional light has a box that it renders the shadow in. So we can add these parameters over here to increase the box's size as well as the map. The map has to do with the quality of the shadow. But if we add these settings, and just for time being, we're going to remove the orbit controls, and we're going to set the camera's position so that we have a static camera viewing top-down. Add the camera's position, and we're just going to increase the Y value to 10. Save and go back to your scene. We can now see the sphere, and if we go and move it to the far edges, you can see that the shadow is still there. And that is because we increased the area. Now you can also play around with the quality. But keep in mind, when we do a game, we're most probably going to put the position of this light and anchor it maybe to the character's position. And that is because we want the light to follow us around and cast shadows around the character. Great, so let's go ahead and do some cleanup. I'm going to put my orbit controls back and I don't need the camera's position to be changed. I'm going to take off this transform control from the sphere and remove it here too. And then for the ground mesh, because we are going to have a ground in our metaverse, I'm going to extract this in its own component. An easy way to do that is to simply copy the lights component and then let's rename this to be our ground. In this component now, remember to change this as well to ground and here at the bottom. Go back to index, let's cut out the mesh and in the ground component we will return this. We don't need these references and also these imports. Now we have our component, so here at the top, let's import our ground and then place it in here. Our scene is now way better structured as well. And this is a good practice to keep on making components whenever you feel like you want to clean up the main file. Now, if we go back, we refresh, we should still have our orbit controls, our sphere, our lights, and the shadow. All lights are relatively simple to implement. Let's take a look at the hemisphere light. This light is unique and very cool to use. This light emits from two different sources, one from the top known as the sky and the ground. And we can set those colors. In the code in the lights file, Let's go ahead and add a hemisphere light. For the arguments, I've got a purple color that's going to be our sky and a yellow color that's going to be the ground and an intensity of 10. I'm going to hide the ambient light as well as the directional light. And here is the result. You can see that there from the top, there's a purple shine coming down. And this is clearly indicated by the whole ground now being illuminated with a light purple. And from the ground up, there's a yellow shine coming uh, from the ground upwards. And this is to add some realism to a scene. In our example, we can go ahead and unhide the ambient light as well as the directional light. Then, let's go ahead and choose a blue color for the sky. I'm going to copy this value and bring it back and replace the sky's color value. Then for the ground, I'm going to choose a green, copy this, and replace the ground value. I am going to turn down the intensity to 0 0.4. Maybe we can even make it 0 0.7 and turn down the ambient light to 0 0.2. When we look at the example now, 
if we refresh, this is our scene. And as you can see, there is some light bouncing from the ground onto the sphere. It's very faint, but in real life, color bounces off object, and in this case, off the ground. And from the top down, there's a light blue color shining on the sphere. It is very uh, difficult to see, but your eyes will pick that up and make this feel more realistic. I am very happy with our lighting so far, and this is the lighting that we will use for our metaverse. However, there are some other lights that you can play around with, and those are the point light and the spotlight. A point light is perfect to use in your scene for things like street lamps or any light source that you need to come from a given target. And a spotlight is exactly what it says. It acts like a theater stage spotlight. Great for theater or maybe car lights. However you decide to implement your lighting, I hope you have fun. And I do hope that you had fun with me learning more about lights in this video. Please go and check out all the other videos of this series. And if you did enjoy the content, give that like button some love and subscribe and leave a comment below if you would like me to cover something else as well. Till next time, see you in the next video. Cheers for now.